this is my office yep my van this is my office so this is where I do my work I do my work out of my van not in my van but um, I got some things I'd like to share with you on Bible translation okay it's a bit of a controversial issue but you know I'm just concerned about a few things I've been seeing and I want to show you eventually part one here I'm going to show you ten ten different verses that are different um, I'm using the NIV, the New, America, the New International Version. I'm going to use this one and show you. And I'm going to show you the King James Version, okay? I'm not a King James only kind of a guy. Um, but the New King James is also good translation. But there's something different about these, you know? I can't figure it out. I just started seeing this. And I got a book a while ago on a fellow who did some translation uh situations and compared translations and and he was saying well why are there things gone and you know he, he was dead on right and I, I I just started looking at the Bible too and I'm seeing things gone um, I'm just saying that if you really want a deeper sense of what the Word of God says and you want to grow and um, it's better to maybe avoid these versions that have uh, like these mistakes in them or these things they take out I know that you, a long time ago when they translated scripture, sometimes when they made a mistake on something they were translating, they, they'd set the, the paper aside, they'd set that paper aside, and then they wouldn't touch it, and then, they'd, and then they'd go on to something else, and then they'd start all over again, and then if they make a mistake, they put it aside. Apparently, they never got rid of those, those uh, destroyed them, they kept them things. Oh, it's raining out, by the way, you can hear the rain coming down. It's a rainy day today. So anyway, I just thought I'd mention to you that um, it's it's really interesting stuff. Take your Bible, grab any Bible you want, get ESV, New American Standard. They're all the same. There's stuff gone in them. Um, any of them. Grab anything you can. Just double check it. You'll see some things gone here. There'll be a few of them. The New American Standard sometimes puts brackets around things that are gone. Okay, sometimes. Not every time. So here we go. Let's start in Matthew... 12.35 If you can hear me through the rain, that'll be great. See what happens here. The good man brings forth good things out of the good stored up in him. And the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. Okay, that's NIV. Now, check out this one. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. Okay, why is the word treasure gone? Why is that gone? Okay, that gives you a little bit more idea, something a little more deeper. Now, this is just the beginning. Wait till we go farther into this. Don't shut off the video yet. You wait till you see these other things that are coming. Okay, Matthew 19.9. Okay, I'm not doing this as a knockdown. I'm not knocking people down and whatever. People can, you, know, you can think that if you want. I'm not knocking anybody down. This is just something I've seen. It's bothered me terribly because I love the word of God. I love the word. And I see these errors and these things gone and it bothers me. Uh, whether they're really errors, I don't know. Okay, that I don't know for sure, but they're definitely gone. Okay. Um, 19 verse 9. Here we go. Jesus is talking about divorce here, okay? I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for marital unfaithfulness and marries another woman, another woman commits adultery, period. Okay, 198 in the King James. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, commits adultery. Okay, there's more. It didn't stop there. And whoso marrieth her which is put away doth commit adultery. There you go. Look at that. Check that out. There's a little more to it. He who, mar he who whosoever marries her that is put away doth commit adultery. That means someone that got divorced well, for whatever reason, 
but they got divorced from their husband or from their wife, and their husband or wife still alive, and then they remarry somebody else, commits adultery. Okay, that's not a popular thing. Definitely now, not nowadays, but it's right there in the King James. But it's gone in NIV. Why is it gone? I don't know. You decide on that one. And it wasn't to fit the culture. I'm sorry, but it wasn't to fit the culture of today. Okay, we don't do that. This is God's word. We stick with God's word. We don't try to fit it into the, the realms of the way the culture is going, right? It doesn't seem to work that way. And once we start doing that, then we start compromising things. Okay, Mark 9.44. Let's go to Mark 9.44. Okay, Mark 9.44. Verse 44. If your hand causes you to sin, verse 43, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell, where the fire never goes out. Okay, verse 44. In the King James, it's actually verse 44 to 48. Check those out, okay? Where their worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. Okay? Verse 43 says, And if thy right hand if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is bitter for you to enter into life maimed. Okay, I'll change the words to thee. I'll make it a, I'll try to make it you know, kind of modernize it and say you or, you know, I'll try to do that when I can in here just to make it a bit easier. Um, and if your hand offend you, cut it off, for it is better for you to enter life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Verse 44 says, where their worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. Okay, it that verse only shows up about the worm. That shows up only in verse 48 in the, in, the, in the NIV. In the, in, the, in the NIV. It only shows up in verse 48. I don't know why, but it is emphasized three times in the King James. Verse 46 and in verse 48. It's three times. It's, I believe that the Lord is trying to say something. Here's Jesus talking. He's trying to tell us there is a bad place. This is a bad place. The worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. This is the, the place of hell. This is a bad place. And also, the prophet Isaiah, chapter 66, chapter 66 verse 24. That's the, Check that out. Just read that. Chapter 66, verse 24 has the exact same verse. But the fire and the worm dies not. So check it out. It's there. So anyway, why am I saying this? I don't know why they took only put one in there. At least they put one in there. But, but it's the idea. I believe Jesus was trying to emphasize something here. He's trying. It's out of his love he's telling us. Be careful. This is there. I don't want you going there. It's a love. It's his love. It's not just, you know, newspaper thing, right? It's, it's, it's him serious. He loves us. He's trying to warn us. And there are 30 versions... 30 other versions do not have that. It has it probably only one time in there. Okay, 30 other versions. Okay, check it out. Okay, Mark 11.26. Mark 11.26. The rain finally stopped out there now. It's gone. Whoa, Mark 11.26 is disappeared. What happened there? I don't know. Here it is. Here's the verse that's missing. Verse 25. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. That's awesome, right? But listen what it says here. Verse 25 in the King James says, And when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses or sins. The same thing. But then in verse 26, which is gone in the NIV, he, continue, he continues to tell you a bit more. But if you do not forgive, 
neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. So there's another thing he's saying that's a little deeper. And I think that's really important, that one. Okay, now let's go to Mark 15, 28. Try to, try to, it's hard to go real fast through these things, right? To flip it really fast. It's pretty hard. 1528. Um, it's gone. Oh, no. <laughs> Mark 1528 has disappeared once more. Okay, let's go. Let's see. Let's read it out here. 1528. Let's read 1527. They crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. Okay, it ends there. Okay. King James says this, And with him they crucified two thieves, one on his right hand and the other on his left. And then verse 28, that's gone in, in the NIV, it says this, And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, And he was numbered with the transgressors. Okay, that's gone. That's very important. That, to me, is huge. That that's not in the NIV. You probably won't find it in some of the other versions. You won't... You won't... Uh, it's, it's the quote from Isaiah 53, verse 12. That's an important verse. That was a fulfillment. And look what happened. They took it out. They took it out. I don't know why. Again, that's up to you to decide on that one. 